Good afternoon, Riga. Thank you so much for joining us today for this great chat. And Paul, I wanna welcome you to Tech Chill. It's your first time here, I understand. Yeah, first time. And you're joining us from San Francisco where you're the founder of Bayes Impact, which is a really incredible company. And when I saw the program for Tech Chill this year, I was like, you know, this is the person I wanna speak to. So in 2014, Bayes Impact was one of the first nonprofits that was accepted to Y Combinator. And since then, they've gone on to do incredible things. They've helped over 150,000 people in France get back to work, eliminated microcredit fraud in Ghana, and now Bayes Impact is used by 800 police stations in California to help uh, reduce violence. So can you tell us a little bit about how you got started and why you got into this work? I understand your background, you're a data scientist. Yeah, that's correct. So the whole vision behind Bayes Impact is, how, is to apply data and AI to address social issues. Um, and uh, this is why we did some of the work that you mentioned earlier. And, and the, the reason why um, uh, I think the idea originally came up is uh, I, was in, I was in San Francisco, everyone's talking about how software is eating the world, everyone's talking about how to build a billion dollar company. Um, and it's true that technology has um, immense potential to create impact at scale, but I, I found that the users that we, uh, that we tended to have for this technology tended to lack meaning. Um, you know, I was a data scientist in Silicon Valley, most of my work was in making people click on more ads. Um, but I was like, can we use this technology instead, not just to make you buy things, but to also help people and to help address the problems in their lives? Um, and so when it came to deciding between creating a startup and doing something else, I decided, well, I, I do want to do my own thing, but I want to, I want to create a nonprofit instead. Yeah, and, and how did you make that switch from working at one of the, the biggest companies in Silicon Valley, you were at Eventbrite, um, and then deciding, hey, you know, I really want to do something different. Like, how did that transition work? Uh, I remember having one, uh, I mean, I was always uh, wanting to, to, to do something meaningful and have, and have impact in my life, but I think one of the uh, triggers was, um, as you may know, in San Francisco, you have tremendous inequality, you have a, a lot of uh, extremely rich people, rich tech people, and on the other side of the street, you have one of the biggest homelessness problems in the country, and actually in the developed world as well. Um, and so I was volunteering by night at, uh, at soup kitchens, homeless shelters, uh, and by day I was working as a data scientist, building algorithms that touched millions of users. And um, I remember seeing the disconnect, this crazy disconnect, where if you want to help people when you work on nonprofits, you tend to do one at a time. Right, so you're helping, uh, you're, you're helping the people you see in line, you know there's 50 more people in line, and you know that behind the doors of the shelter there's, there's 5,000 more um, that, uh, that you'd want to help but cannot. Uh, and so there's this connect between the, the fact that if you want to make profit is scalable and the fact that if you want to create impact, it tends to be one-to-one. -one. Um, uh, I think was, uh, uh, was uh, difficult for me to accept, and this is why uh, I decided to make the switch. Mm -hmm. And, and Bayes Impact, so impact is a really big component of what you do, both impacting your community and working with people, but also social impact within the company culture itself. So can we talk a little bit about what impact means to you and, and why it's important to work on projects that, that have a positive social impact? <laughs> That's a very difficult philosophical question. Um, for the record, I do not uh, necessarily believe that it's, uh, that it's um, uh, obligatory to be a nonprofit if you want to create impact. So um, my definition of impact is more encompassing, is it's uh, defining what your social mission is and, and do it beforehand. You know, a lot of what tech companies do is they create a mission afterwards. So they will say, well, I, you know, I'm making money because there's inefficiency in the way that we, uh, um, that we book hotels, right? Um, so that would be Airbnb, for example. And then after a while, you come up with the idea that, well, actually, our mission is to make everyone uh, feel at home, everyone on the planet. And so you kind of like retrofit a social mission to your original business. Um, and this is all fine, but uh, you know, in many ways, it also leads to missions that can be a bit more shallow. Mm -hmm. And if you want to really make impact the heart of your company, the, the important thing is to first start with a mission, being like, okay, what's the social issue you want to solve? What's the positive impact you want to create in the world? and then engineer the model to make that change happen. Mm -hmm. 
And, and individuals can't, can't do it alone. So when you're talking about developing a, a socially impactful company, you need to bring others along with you. So can you talk a little bit about team building and how you've helped recruit and build a team that can help carry out this mission? Um, yeah, so one of the things we really wanted to do from the, from the get-go uh, is uh, we wanted to create a nonprofit that was not just to, to, to feel good, but also to do good. Um, and it relates to your previous question about wanting to do impact and trying to really maximize our impact, having as much as possible. Um, and so to that end, right, our mission is to reinvent public services. That's the official motto of Base Impact. It's, of course, a very ambitious mission. And so we wanted to make sure that in, in, in trying to carry out an ambitious social mission, you can also create an ambitious team. And in the nonprofit sector, it tends to be something that, uh, that is not always the norm. It's harder to recruit top talent because obviously you have less money, you have, uh, um, you have some also stigma around nonprofits um, where people see it as something that's inherently less efficient, um, or at least uh, less, uh, uh, less proficient. And um, what we did was from the get-go, really trying to establish it as another kind of nonprofit. So trying to be, uh, you know, even starting it as a, we're, we're a startup NGO. Um, uh, this is the mission we want to take. You know, in the same way that most for-profit companies will have this slide showing you their total addressable market being in the $50 billion uh, dollar range. Um, also saying about how you really want to tackle really ambitious issues. And, and because you want to tackle ambitious issues and have an ambitious mission, then you, you need an ambitious team to do that. Um, and then a few elements of branding that also really helped is um, uh, being one of the first nonprofits in Y Combinator also really helped set the tone mm -hmm. uh, that uh, we didn't want to do just any kind of nonprofit. Yeah. Um, and you know, it turns out that it was back in 2014. Was, at the time, talking about tech for good uh, was still pretty fringe. Uh, a lot of people thought we were crazy. Um, but it turns out, yeah, you actually don't need. It's actually not that hard to recruit top talent over there because. Um, you have tens of thousands of extremely good engineers in Silicon Valley. A lot of them have already made uh, a significant amount of money and don't necessarily want to make that much more. Mm -hmm. And so if you, if, you, uh, if you come to them and tell them there's a way to utilize the skills to create impact in the world, um, there is some significant fraction of them that will say, OK, it's fine. You know, I, I, I don't need to keep making 300k at Google uh, per year. You know, I have my house. I have, uh, I have th everything that I need, so now um, I still need to make a livelihood, but I don't want to optimize for money anymore. I want, to, I want to optimize for impact. And the thing is, even if this is not the majority of people, it's still a significant enough fraction mm -hmm. of people so that, well, even if, if, uh, if just 10% of the people think like that in Silicon Valley, you have you know, tens of thousands of engineers, so it means you have potentially a talent pool of, of thousands of people uh, that would be willing to put their skills to good. Right, and, and the, the idea of tech for good being a fringe issue um, and kind of mm. being somewhat contrary to some of the, the other predominant values in Silicon Valley. So it, it might not sound like it, but I come from Scotland where we have a really high, uh, per, uh, really significant sector of social entrepreneurs and people working in the third sector. But something that they often child, or have difficulty with is being taken s seriously. Yeah. So. What are some, um, is this something that you've encountered as well? And, and how have um, you been able to get over it? What advice would you have for others that are interested in working on a social purpose initiatives? Being taken seriously by whom? Okay. Uh, it, it's a question to you. you. You said they were having trouble being taken seriously by... By investors, by the community, you work a lot with government, for example, um, and sometimes the government isn't always on board with working mm. with entrepreneurs, especially um, in new ventures. Yeah, so I, I think the answer is going to depend on, on which people you want to win over. Um, I think overall the main factor is you have to be more radical. Uh, I'm, <laughs> this is something that I quite believe in, actually, because a lot of time when you want to do social impact, you have to make a lot of compromises. Uh, because, of course, there's less money in the space. Uh, you work with actors that can be slower and, and more difficult to partner up with. Uh, you know, when, for example, you think about governments. Um, and so it's really easy to get into a stage where you make so many compromises that your bargaining power uh, becomes, uh, becomes lower. Just one example, you mentioned investors, right? Um, if you're a nonprofit, you're scrunching for money. Um, 
you get into this relationship with, with investors where you're like, oh, please give me money, I, I need your help. Whereas if you're, let's say, if you're an extremely hot startup, it's the opposite, right? Investors come to you to have the opportunity to work with you and to invest in you. Um, and so a big part of uh, a thing of being taken seriously as a nonprofit is to flip the narrative uh, and, and, and try really hard to be, uh, you know, so to, to not be, you know, in, in, um, in this in this position where uh, you f you feel like people like you be extremely happy to be to have the opportunity to work with people, but that would be the other way around and be like, okay, well, we want to create change in the world. Do you want to be part of it? Do you want to be part of the of the adventure? And um, here, that's what I'm talking about with investors. But the same story applies when you work with partners with governments. Um, I think one thing that really helped is the fact that we had uh, an international nature from the get go. Mm -hmm. And so what that means is. You know, you can go to uh, a specific government and say, well, um, we're really interested in working with you because we think that this place would be an amazing place to, uh, to experiment. Um, and this is the way that we want to do it, this is the way that we operate, but, uh, uh, but if it doesn't work out, well, we have other places we can, we can work in. And, and, um, and you know, it, it, in the end, people actually prefer that because it also means that uh, your value proposition is clear. So it's like, do you want to partner up, do you not want to partner up? Um, whereas the reason why you're not taking seriously is because uh, you try so hard to make something work that is not meant to happen, that at the end of the day you start losing your consistency. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Great, and, and it kind of relates to a question that from the audience here. Um, and it asks, because you have such an international nature to the projects you do, you're working with employment, you're working with microcredit, you're working with police, lots of different aspects. Well, social issues have an international nature, unfortunately. Right, and, and, this, and the question asks, how do you go about being selective about which particular social issues you want to try and tackle? There's so many potential problems out there that you could apply this data um, ra rationale to. So how do you choose? That's a great question, and in fact, it's, it's extremely difficult to answer, um, and it's even more difficult to keep, because if you want to do, um, if your goal is to create as much impact as possible in the world, well, well one, one thing that you, you're faced with is you have to say no to a lot of things. Um, as you all know, uh, in, the of, in, in the start of life, uh, Having focus is one of the most important things, and if you uh, if you do too many things or you spread yourself too thin, you you're not really able to uh, to um, or you get stretched too thin, and you, you're not really able to uh, to do really impactful things or to um, or to solve the issues that you have because it, because these tend to be extremely difficult issues. Um, and if you have a strong business mission, it's very clear, right? You, you have a metric to optimize. You want to optimize your MAUs, your uh, your revenue, whatever. Uh, you have your product, you sell it. If you want to do impact, um, you have to accept that sometimes people will come to you and be like, um, it happened to me yesterday actually. I was giving a speech here in Latvia and they were like, okay, well, we have a huge bullying problem uh, and we think that some of the tools that you built uh, for police violence, uh, maybe some of them could be applied here and you have, to, you have to be like, oh, actually I would love to help, I would love to be able to do something with bullying, but it's not on the roadmap. And so that's really difficult to do. Mm -hmm. um, so here I have two answers. The first one is in the way that we select projects, we have this rationale where we're um, kind of the same way that if you're a, you a for-profit company, you would, you would compute what your total addressable market is, you would try to figure out your go-to-market strategy and how you capture as much of it as possible. Here you have some kind of impact formula where you look at the size of the issue, you try to figure out like what kind uh, of delta you can make using technology, because of course technology is not going to solve all the problems. Um, it can be a catalyst for change, but it's not a one size fits all solution. So you kind of like have this calculation and, and then you try to figure out what's the highest impact thing you can work on. So that's the first part of the answer. The second part is striving for more systemic impact because you as an organization cannot do everything. Um, you have to say no, uh, as I said, on, on, many, on many issues, but it doesn't mean that you should not try to to help solve them. And so here, uh, this is where I really believe in trying to foster more of, a, of an ecosystem of social entrepreneurs or of tech nonprofits um, that can, if, you know, if it's not you, then someone, someone else can, can do it. Um, and the space is really new. The space of, uh, uh, you know, we, in, the, in, in, the, in the conduct of our work, we, we, we have to solve a lot of challenges that, uh, um, 
that tend to be quite novel, right? How do you foster more innovation with governments? How do you uh, make sure that uh, your algorithm for police violence is not biased? I mean, there's so many things that, that, uh, that are new challenges. And, um, and so I, I think here there's a huge opportunity to help structure the impact community as well and share the lessons that you learn so that others can, can also do their work more easily. Right, and in four years, or now on our fifth year of, of base impact, you've had so many incredible accomplishments. Is there one that stands out to you that you're really proud of, that you'd like to share and, and kind of tell us a little bit about why it has made such an impact um, for you? Um, yeah, I think the main one for us is, uh, so it's a platform called Bob. It's a, it's a technology that we built for employment. Uh, we've been able to coach more than 170,000 unemployed people in France to get back to work. Um, and, uh, and the thing here is, uh, the reason why I mentioned as, as something that we're most proud of is uh, we're starting to get to a stage where this project is uh, being reintegrated into public services and, and where we have other countries uh, that, um, that are in the process of, um, of uh, implementing this platform as well. So, uh, Bob, for, for, for context, it's, uh, it's basically an AI employment counselor, the idea being that using labor market data, using uh, uh, AI on past job secret pathways, you can create an AI that, that will provide the best possible advice in a data-driven way. Um, and create this automated personalized coaching platform. Um, and, uh, and so the fact that Bob is something that, that is being used in multiple countries to me is very important because, um, you know, when you talk about tech for good, a lot of time it tends to stay at the stage of, of you know, cool and sexy demos or you show, uh, you know, you show what could work, but it tends to remain a fringe, uh, uh, you know, fringe accomplishment or, uh, you know, it feels good, but uh, if you really want to impact the system, um, then at some point or the other, you need to, you need, you need to also contaminate and, uh, and help modernize public services as a whole. Mm -hmm. um, and so the broader story here is not about how tech people uh, think they're superheroes. I mean, the stage is called the superhero stage. So I think that the actual story is not about tech people being superheroes. It's about how tech people can, um, you know, can, can help innovate, but then uh, they cannot do it alone. Um, and today, the people who, who provide um, services to the people who need it at scale tend to be government. And so if you don't think about your relationship with governments, uh, and if you don't think about how you can reinvent the way they provide public services in a broader sense, then you will always uh, stay uh, you know, marginal and you won't have the impact that you want. Great, and, and just very quickly before we end, a question from Justice in the audience. Um, do you wait for governments or NGOs to approach you, or do you seek out problems on your own? Like, how do you um, get your attention for a problem to solve? Uh, it's a mixture of both. Um, of course, we always have an open dialogue so, so that people can also propose projects to us. Um, but very much what we try to do in setting up the projects is that we, uh, we propose the projects. Um, uh, there's not enough time for that, uh, but one of the big issues in government is procurement and how you create innovation in markets that are extremely um, not agile <laughs> in terms of culture. And so a big part of, uh, of the startup ethos is when you talk about disruption, you want, to soften, you want to start from a blank slate and you want to have the power to iterate, try things, fail, pivot. Uh, and this is really what we need in, 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 uh, in the social impact space as well. And so in order to have the freedom, what we, try to, what we tend to do is to use philanthropy as a way to replace VC funding um, so that we have the independence to propose projects, try things, and then once we're confident enough in the solution that we built, then we propose it to governments. Great. So that's a great call to action to everyone um, out in the audience. And our, our time's up. Thank you so much yeah. for being here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank mm -hmm. you.